Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our third video for our Passover Object Talk series. My name is Emma, and I am the Engagement Officer at the Jewish Museum London. Passover is an eight-day festival that celebrates the freedom of the Israelites in the Exodus story of the Torah. Throughout this festival, and particularly on the first night and Seder meal, Jewish people will reflect on the story and its relevance today. The Passover story highlights themes of injustice, enslavement, xenophobia, migration, the climate crisis, and the role of women. Themes which still hold a huge relevance in modern day society. For our Passover Object Talk series, we are delighted to partner with a range of museums to bring modern day injustices to light through objects from both collections. For day five of Passover, we have partnered with the Migration Museum to shed light on the theme of migration. At the Jewish Museum London, we have over 40,000 objects, many of which highlight this theme. Since the events of the Torah and the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, migration has played a key part in Jewish history. Since the 11th century, Jewish people have migrated to the UK, coming from multiple countries around the world, including France, Portugal, Russia, Poland, Yemen, India, and so many more countries. Jewish people have come here in some instances to seek a better life and employment opportunities, but many have also arrived to flee persecution and pogroms to find safety. I would like to share a cartoon from our museum's collection. This cartoon is Please Have Your Passports Ready, a cartoon by Phineas Leopold May. It imagines what might have happened if the events of the Passover story happened today, an age of borders and passport controls. In this image, the immigration official asks the Israelites to have their documents ready before they cross the Red Sea. In the Passover story, we reflect on how difficult it was for the Israelites to leave a land where they were being persecuted and forced into slavery. This is an issue for people today. This cartoon reminds us how hard it can be to migrate today, to escape a place of persecution and to gain entry into another country and find safety. One museum that explores the history of migration and migration today is, of course, the Migration Museum. We are so delighted that they have partnered with us for this talk. And I will now hand over to Emily from the Migration Museum to introduce us to their brilliant museum and share some objects from their collection. Hello and welcome to the Migration Museum. My name is Emily Miller and I'm Head of Learning and Partnerships here. Our mission is to establish a permanent migration museum for the UK, looking at our long history of immigration and of emigration, and really to try and explore how migration has shaped us all as individuals, families, communities, and nations. We're currently here in a temporary space in Lewisham, southeast London, in the middle of a very normally very busy shopping centre and we're really looking forward to reopening and welcoming you um, to come and visit us if you can. We have a major exhibition every year and last year and into this year our major exhibition is called Departures. Departures looks at 400 years of emigration, tens of millions of people with British ancestry around the world um, and their reasons for leaving and their impact both in the countries they moved to and then back here in the UK. We start off with the story of the Mayflower. Departures is laid out like an airport so you enter at the Departures Lounge where you get given your boarding pass and then the stories that we share and the histories we share are shared in different gates. The story I want to focus on with you today is in Departure Gate 2, Forced to Leave and it sits alongside other stories um, of those forced to leave the UK from female convicts um, en route to Tasmania and Australia and the child migrant scandal that took place all the way up to the 1960s. Um, and here behind me, we're going to focus on the Denera. 
This was shared with us by one of our trustees' husband. His name is Nick Ross, and he talks about his father's experience being deported during the Second World War. The King's Most Loyal Enemy Alien. My father, Hans Carol Ross, known as John to his friends and Carol to his family, was born to Jewish parents in Berlin. His mother was horrified when Hitler was appointed Chancellor in 1933 and sent Carol to the railway station to buy tickets for England. They closed up their flat, took what they could carry and never saw their home again. Carol became a student at LSE and got engaged to Joy Richmond, but in 1940, amid fear of Nazi invasion, all enemy aliens were interned. Bizarrely, and to the government's eventual embarrassment, this included Jews and other anti-Nazis. Now, age 25, Carol was marched onto a ship called the Denera, where he and 2,000 other internees received a hostile welcome and weeks of brutal treatment at sea. So far as frantic relatives back in England were concerned, they had simply disappeared. After weeks at sea, they emerged to the bright sunshine of Sydney, Australia, where they were taken under guard to a remote town for the next eight months. Meanwhile, in London, Parliament had been angrily debating the so-called Donera affair, and eventually Churchill issued an apology. Carol finally made his way back to the UK, where he married my mother and joined the army. His regiment became known as the King's Most Loyal Enemy Aliens, and he changed his own name from Rosenbluth to Ross. He eventually saw action in the Far East, where he was prom promoted to Major. Ironically, as a former British internee, he ended the war responsible for large numbers of prisoners. These two illustrations by Fritz Schoenbach show detail of life aboard the Denera during that journey. There were 2,000 anti-Nazis, mostly Jewish refugees, put on this ship. And this first illustration shows um, the treatment on board by the guards. The second shows their reception as they arrived into Australia. This piece shows one of the signs internees held up to persuade Australians that they were friend, not foe. Generally, the Australians were relatively friendly and fairly bemused by this. After all, the internees must have been one of the most extraordinary group of prisoners ever assembled, because most Germans who had escaped from the Nazis were highly educated, and the internees quickly created their own orchestra, art classes, lectures, and a camp administration. Inmates printed their own newspapers, including the Boomerang, which you can see here, and Haywire, and even their own currency. After their release, many chose not to make the dangerous journey back to the UK, and they stayed in Australia. Others, like Carol, returned to the, join the British Army, though they were often given support roles until the authorities came to trust those with German accents in their ranks. The Denera is just one of many of the stories we share here in Departures, and we'd love to host you here when we safely can do so. For now, I want to say thank you for listening, and from me and the Migration Museum team, Pesach Sameach to you all. Thank you, Emily, for sharing those objects from your collection. It gives us a lot to reflect on, how the themes of the Passover story are still so relevant today. That being forced to leave your home and build a new life in a new land are experiences found throughout history and still present today. To learn more and to support this brilliant museum, we encourage you to explore the Migration Museum's social media and website. Thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Do join us for another talk at the same time tomorrow. And from all of us at the Jewish Museum London, we wish you Hug Sameach. <laughs>